What's going on everyone? In today's episode, we're gonna be answering the question of does variety really matter when canning tomatoes? Whether it's a beef steak, a slicing tomato, a paste tomato, or a cherry tomato, we're gonna to try all four, blindfolded, come to a conclusion, give you an answer so that you can make the best informed decision as to what you should be canning. First example we're gonna be talking about is the beef steak. Now, the beef steak, as you can see, is really meaty. That's where it gets its name. It typically has a medium thick skin, pretty low seeds, but also low moisture content. Now, typically you'd see this on things like burgers or BLTs. Because of the fact it has a low moisture content, it can be used for making pasta sauces and pizza sauces, but it's not typically the tomato that most people turn to. That would be something like a canning tomato. And this is what a lot of people consider a canning tomato. Now, you'd kind of consider this to be a paste tomato if you've grown tomatoes before. The reason why canning tomatoes and paste tomatoes are pretty synonymous with each other is because you want typically when you can tomatoes, a low moisture tomato. And that's what you're getting with these paste tomatoes is you'll notice the gel pockets are really small. There's very few seeds to a meat ratio. The skin is fairly thin. So when it comes to canning up these, this is typically the tomato of choice for most people. Next is a slicing tomato. Now a slicing tomato is like your classic Americanized tomato. Now, this tomato is something that most people have seen on a burger before or sliced up in wedges on salads. It is a medium, I would say medium on the meaty scale, but it's also fairly juicy. So it's got a high water content and it typically has a thicker skin, which holds itself together a lot better. It doesn't get soft as fast on the countertop. But because of its high moisture content, a lot of people would typically say that you're not gonna wanna can it because you're gonna end up with a lot of excess moisture. So we're gonna see how this compares to the rest. And the final is the cherry tomato. Now a cherry tomato is not the tomato that most people would turn to for canning simply because they are a very high moisture content, very low meat content, the skin is typically a little thicker and it typically also has a fair amount of seeds. So when it comes to cherry tomatoes, a lot of times you just eat them whole or sometimes, sometimes people will sun dry them. But nevertheless, we're going to try those as well because what we're doing, as obviously, as you can tell, is trying all four different types of tomatoes. You have cherry, paste, beef steak, and slicing which make up the four main groups of tomatoes. So what we're gonna to do to do this test is we're gonna take each individual tomato variety, throw them in a blender and blend them up. Then we're gonna take them and put them through a sieve to sieve out any seeds and skin. So we're just getting the juice and the puree. Then we're gonna put those into pans and boil them for five minutes. Now, why five minutes? Well, it's because typically we would only boil paste tomatoes for five minutes. So that's kind of our baseline for this test and this experiment because yeah, we could boil them longer or we could just not boil them at all, but it's not pretty, it's not realistic to boil them for longer than five minutes typically. And it's really unrealistic to not boil them at all. And so because five minutes is our baseline, they're all gonna get the same boil time. And then that way, when we blindfold ourselves, I can taste them and give you an honest comparison as to moisture, flavor, and other characteristics that might go into why one would be better than the other. So in between each variety, I'm washing out the blender and the colander so there's no flavor contamination. That way we have the most honest test here. Last but not least is the paste tomatoes. We freed up a pan, so we're gonna blend these up, get them boiling for five minutes, and then we'll be able to do our test. All right, so we got all four of our tomatoes here, all four are boiled for five minutes. We have roughly the same amount of each. Some, like the cherry tomato, just yielded less. But next, I thought it was gonna be a fair assessment here because I would always add salt so I'm gonna add salt to all four of them. And I'm just gonna do a quarter teaspoon of salt in each, mix them up that way, because I would always add salt. So it's something that I would kind of be familiar with, helps to enhance the flavor. So since they all got it, I think that's kind of fair. All right, so before we get into the taste test, I kind of was just gonna like, kind of just give an overview here of what we're looking at. So A is going to be the beef steak, B is going to be slicing tomato, C is the paste tomato and D is the cherry tomato. Now, from a strict color perspective, I see a couple things that are pretty cool. They kind of stand out. The cherry tomato is by far the most vibrant. I mean, just 
really, really vibrant red. From a moisture perspective, B, the slicing tomato is definitely way more moist, has so much more moisture content in it. Comparatively, like beefsteak and paste are really close to each other, actually. Now, there is a fair amount of moisture in the cherry tomato as well, but, but slicing definitely is crazy. Obviously, too, like if I just were to look at them, you know, texture wise, like how, how smooth the sauce looks, it's kind of crazy, but I would say texture wise kind of goes to slicing tomato. It seems a bit grainy. Beefsteak seems a bit grainy. The paste tomato also seems pretty smooth, but could be a little bit smoother. I don't know why. Maybe, who knows, maybe they weren't at peak ripeness, but they seemed very ripe to me. They smelled great when I was cutting them. So I don't know. Um, and then also pretty smooth on the, on the cherry tomato. So pretty cool. We're gonna next do a blindfold and I'm going to do a blind taste test see if I can discern which is which and be an honest representation of kind of what I think. So, all right, let's go. I don't know why I'm nervous right now. I mean, there's really no stakes. In, there's nothing at stake, but like, yeah. okay, ready? Where am I at here? Okay, thank you, okay. I haven't smelled any of them yet. So off a of smell, it smells like a stewed tomato. Maybe a bit more like if I'm used to the smell that I usually smell, it's, it's, a, it's a tad bit like, I don't wanna say metallic-y, but like, it's a little more earthy, I guess I would say. That's really good. This is really good. Super smooth. Really, really smooth. Awesome tomato flavor. Like, ooh, that's good. A little soupy, but I can't tell if that's normal soupiness or not. I don't usually like taste my tomatoes like that. Okay, okay. Ooh, not nearly as much earthiness. Really, I don't wanna call like watered down, but it smells like just like, like tomato juice. Chunky. It's kind of grainy, not awesome flavor. Ew, I wouldn't, wouldn't do that again. Flavor wise though, so a tad sweeter. It's kind of flat, it's kind of flat, but there is obviously like a very pronounced tomato flavor, but it doesn't have that, that really rich flavor that I was getting from the first one, wherever the, this first one here. So the first one, I would give this one like an eight out of 10. I think this is awesome. The second one here, I would give this one like, without trying the rest, I don't know, I don't wanna go too low, but I, I think like in terms of tomatoes that I've had, like stewed tomatoes, I, I'd go like four and a half out of 10. I think that's safe. Ooh, I got that beautiful smell again. It's very tomatoey, super tomatoey. It's got that like earthy, I don't wanna call it metallic, but it's got like, it's very minerally. It smells really good. Oh man. I'm excited about this one. This one has that great smell. Oh, that's creamy. That's good. Oh, wow. Oh no. I'm really hoping you guys are getting something out of this because this is kind of stressing me out here because now this is, you know, if, if this was, if this was an eight, hold on, hold on one second. I think, do I have the first one? Yeah. Okay. Oh my. Oh, that's tough. Man, so, okay. So this is a lot sweeter, but also has like this like, under note of just real great tomato flavors, like really deep, rich. Wow, I can't even believe that's just five minutes of boiling. That's like, that's astounding. And then obviously, you know, juice juice was reduced down, reduced out, but like, wow. The texture's really smooth, like very, very smooth. Not super grainy. I mean, I wouldn't, I would not complain if someone gave this to me. I would, I would give this, I'd give this like a, I'd give this like, like a 7.5 out of 10. I think the only thing that make it a little better, the acidity, I like this, the first one, wherever that's at, here. This first one, really acidic. Like it's just, wow, that's awesome. I So disorienting, by the way. Okay, smell. It just smells like just the most flat tomato I've smelled yet. Okay. I, uh, so I mean, when I say flat, it obviously smells like tomato. I mean, you can't complain. I mean, I love tomatoes. I love stewed tomatoes, especially like on like a San Marzano or like on like a margarita pizza, always amazing. But like, that's like all I'm getting. There's no, it's just, it's very flat. Let's give it a taste. Let's see what it tastes like. Ooh, texture though is great. Oh, this is by far the best texture. This is really smooth. Demerit for bad flavor. I mean, not bad flavor, just kind of subpar flavor, but points added for good texture. I don't know. Flavor wise, I'd give this one like a six out of 10. So if I had to guess, oh boy, 
Okay, I'm gonna give them a shot. I'm just gonna taste them now, give you give me my guesses. Man, rich tomato flavor. I, I think knowing what I know about cherry tomatoes, knowing how like concentrated the flavor is, I think this, I think this is the cherry tomato, if I have to guess. I think this is the, I think this is the beef steak. It's just the, the mealiness, I don't know, the, the chunkiness, I don't know, it's just, it's not, not giving a lot. It's just kind of, just kind of there. This one here, I think I, this is the one I liked as well. Yeah, I think this is the slicing tomato, if I had to guess. Reason why, it's definitely a tad bit juicier. Like it's like got a little bit more of like a soupiness on the tongue. Flavor though is awesome. I mean, it's just, is is next level. And I think, I think that's why I think this is paste is because the texture is phenomenal. But like texture would be great, but that's really all it's lending. Like there's not a whole lot of other wow to it. So that's my guess. I, I guess cherry, beefsteak, slicing, and paste. Let's see how I did. Oh, sweet. Okay, so cherry is right. Couldn't be more wrong. Okay, so cherry is right. That's also so bright out. I got half. I got slicing right and cherry tomato right. That's really interesting, you guys. It's very, very interesting, which does make sense. It does actually make sense. Obviously, when you look at like the, the texture of a paste tomato and the texture of a beefsteak tomato, they're, they're very similar. They're just low moisture content, things like that. Well, and also too, it does make sense now that I can like see because the beefsteak tomato has just a lot more volume there's probably gonna be slightly more like moisture, not as much concentrated flavor. That's what, like this, wow. This was awesome. This was great. Now what I'd like to do, just for your education and entertainment, I'm gonna have Hannah make a hybrid of two. And I'm gonna see if I can kind of just decipher which two were combined. Because sometimes you can make a, I mean, you can absolutely make a paste with like, cherries and and beef steak or beef steak and slicing like you could throw a bunch of different tomatoes together to kind of get the best of both worlds so we'll do that and then i'm gonna blindfold i'm gonna see if i can just kind of decipher between the two just from a flavor perspective or a smell perspective Ooh, getting that beautiful really rich kind of like earthy tomato wow that's really tough that is really tough it became completely it like you think you remember what one tastes like you think you remember what another tastes like Combined, oh my gosh. I mean, you might as well just, you might as well just throw a dart with a blindfold. I mean, it's just great texture though. There's a little bit of, eh, a little bit of mealiness in that. Kind of flat baseline. I can't remember which one that was. Also a little mealy, dang it. This is tough. Okay, this one for sure has cherry tomato. This one for sure has cherry tomato and it for sure has, well, I can't say for sure because I don't, I don't know for sure, but I would say if I had to guess, it'd be cherry tomato and slicing. And then that would make this one paste and beef steak. Is that right? Super wrong? No, not super wrong. Okay, I did it. I got the cherry tomato. Yeah, just cherry tomato and beef steak. So I'm still 50%? Yep. Well, what did we learn here? We learned that I'm correct 50% of the time, 100% of the time. Aside from that, I mean, honestly, I hope you learned something. I, I found this to be really fun. It was very enlightening to me because I think what I did learn is that you certainly can kind of add cherry tomatoes to almost any sauce and it's not really gonna affect the overall texture all that much. The, the texture was fine by me. Some of the seeds are smaller so they escape through the sieves. You do get a few seeds in this one. I did taste that one a little bit. But the one I would avoid like all together, well, I don't know, maybe I wouldn't avoid all of them all together. That seems a little bit harsh. <clears throat> but I mean, texture definitely matters a lot. The Slicing had great uh, had great texture and great flavor. The cherry had great texture and great flavor. The paste had by far the best texture of them all, which makes sense. Not great flavor. So you know what you could do in theory is you could take you could take some cherry tomatoes, throw them into a pot with some some paste tomatoes to bring the flavor up, and I think you'd have a very respectable sauce on your hands if you're working with just average run-of-the-mill stuff. That's what these were. These were from a farm stand. They were from the same farm stand. So they were all grown in the same soil and they were all just heirloom, you know, standard as they come. 
So as far as specific varieties go, they're obviously also gonna have different flavor, prof flavor profiles. But like if you compare a San Marzano, we did not have a San Marzano. These were Amish paste. So Amish paste are gonna be a little more Americanized than like your San Marzano or your uh, 10 Fingers of Naples, things like that. They're gonna have a lot more of that rich, deep flavor in them. But from just a farm stand, super generic, cherry paste beef steak and slicer. I'm happy with how this came out. I really think I came up with a, a pretty good, pretty good idea. And honestly, I wouldn't complain if you really would give me any of them in all honesty, especially if they were added to a pasta or on a pizza, like you're, you can't go wrong. So take that for what it's worth and let me know if you enjoyed and let me know in the comments box down below if I should do more videos similar to this. But yeah, as always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow bigger. Take care. Bye. Hey, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed, consider checking this one out. You'll probably enjoy it just as much. I want to thank you so much for your viewership because without it, this channel would not be as amazing as it is. If you haven't subscribed yet, it's free. Consider doing that. We upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, rain or shine. And if you need any garden tools, supplies, or seeds, check out mygardener.com. We got you covered. See you guys in the garden. Bye.